That was spectacular, don't you think? You know, it's a tradition in many medical schools to have an outside speaker come to the white coat ceremony, someone distinguished. And we, we did that for our first year. And then after that, a request was made that the dean give the talk. And um, it was, I'm, it's a privilege for me to do that. I worked hard to compose something for this event uh, that was appropriate. And my plans for what I was about to say were totally disrupted by an extraordinary act of kindness. You see, yesterday afternoon, I learned that you, the members of the class of 2020, had given a gift of flowers to Colleen Ornette in appreciation for all that she did for you in this first week of medical school. And the flowers were accompanied by a handwritten note signed by you all. And then, as I was preparing to meet many of the parents who were taking a tour of the building last night, a member of the class came over to me and handed a card to me, which was a handwritten note from you, signed by you, expressing gratitude. And I want you to know that I accept that note, not personally. I accept it with gratitude and considerable awe on behalf of everyone at OUWB. And I have to confess that whatever I had planned to say today had to be rewritten. You may remember that I started this program this afternoon by expressing thanks, by expressing gratitude to many people. And at OUWB, expressions of gratitude are a core value. You know, it's said that practice makes perfect. Or in the words of Malcolm Gladwell, it takes 10,000 hours to become a master of a skill. So saying thank you is part of your medical training and practicing it over and over again is essential, and I have to tell you, you're off to an excellent start. So you might wonder how saying thank you would ever help you to achieve excellence in the practice of medicine. So let me explain. When you thank a nurse, the transporter, the translator, the pharmacist, the physical therapist, when you thank the speech pathologist, the pharmacist, when you thank all of these people, what you're saying clearly is that the care of my patient is more about we than it is about me. And when you take the time to thank members of a patient's family for filling in the information gap, and when you thank them for enlisting them in help in recovery of their loved one, you're acknowledging the power that a patient's family brings to the process of healing. Look, no one wants to be treated by a physician who is arrogant. I have to tell you, it's very difficult to be arrogant while you're saying thank you. There are many other character traits that we value at OUWB, and each year at this white coat ceremony, I try to focus on a different character trait. And today, I'm going to give you one that will help you navigate the distance between the white, so white coat ceremony and your commencement. So to introduce this year's theme, I relate to you a story about a dinner that I attended while I was visiting another medical school. After a busy day of meetings, I was hosted in a lovely venue. Uh, there were conversations, friendly conversations over hors d'oeuvres. And before the meal started, the, the waiters took our order and they left the room. And immediately after the waiter left the room and we were all seated at the table, one of the physician leaders at this other medical school turned to me and started off the conversation with this question. So, uh, Bob, who's your favorite philosopher? And I have to tell you, it wasn't a question that I usually encounter on business meetings. And the fact that it was coming from a psychiatrist made me a bit nervous. <laughs> I really began to worry about the deeper motives of this whole dinner. <laughs> I had to deliver an honest answer. So I responded this way. In the context of the practice of medicine, and in the context of medical education, I would have to say that my favorite philosopher is Emmanuel Levinas. So few people at this dinner knew anything about this person. And so I had to provide some context. Now, Emmanuel Levinas is a 20th century philosopher who focused on the ethic of <laughs> service to others. Physicians serve others by applying science and technology to promoting, maintaining, and restoring health to their patients, 
and their communities. So in that last phrase, promoting, maintaining, and restoring health to patients in their communities, I was paraphrasing the vision statement of this medical school. And the rest of the evening's conversation pivoted around that question and my answer. So when you matriculated at OUWB on Monday, remember I told you they threw the switch and you were officially medical students? You joined the community. OUWB is a community that serves the community. It serves a community of patients, and it serves a community in which they reside. The notion of service to others is important to you in your journey from the white coat ceremony to commencement day. You can view the volume of knowledge that you must learn and the technical skills that you master as the means of passing examinations, passing tests. And I'm going to suggest to you a different strategy today that you focus on a higher goal, your eventual service to a patient or to a community. Ask yourselves this every time you encounter a body of knowledge that seems impossible to master. And what you can say is, how will what I am learning help me to achieve my goal, my goal of caring for a patient, my goal of providing service to a community? Passing the test and doing well on the test, that'll be a natural consequence of that approach. Please replace the word test anxiety with your passion for the future, your future in caring for patients and caring for communities. And I'll tell you this, you'll be healthier for it and your patients will benefit from it enormously. Yeah. During this past week, you joined the OUWB community. For us at OUWB, uh, it was an experience of getting to know you. And I have to tell you that we are in awe. You inspired us this past week. We learned, as Dr. Nuzzarello summarized, that you are gifted, you are kind, and you are passionate about making an impact. So please know that in this short week, we are so grateful to you for your presence at OUWB. We look forward to being with you on your journey between today, the white coat ceremony, and the time that you received your white coat, and the time that you will receive your academic hood at your commencement. Commencement at OUWB is actually very similar to this event today, to the white coat ceremony. So today at this white coat ceremony, you received a garment, your first white coat. You received an object, your first stethoscope. And you're about to make a commitment to the public recitation of the oath or affirmation of Geneva. At commencement, you'll receive a garment, your academic hood, that indicates that you've mastered the medical school curriculum and you'll receive an object, your diploma. And you'll make a perfect affirmation, a public affirmation of your commitment to the practice of medicine, but there's an important difference between the oath that you will recite on commencement day and the oath you are about to recite today. You see, when you graduate, the oath you recite will be the one that you as a class will have written together with the guidance of professors, debates, and Wasserman. Over the next four years, you'll reflect on the values, the values you inherit today, and the novel interpretations of in insights that you will teach us by the time you reach commencement day. At the white ceremony, you transition into the role of medical student. At commencement, you transition from medical student to medical doctor. So, everyone here, save the date, May 15th, 2020. <laughs> I'm glad you cheered for that. <laughs> That's the day you'll formally be inducted into the profession of medicine. And you know, to get a taste of what that's going to be like, 
We're going to go back exactly 12 weeks from today to May 13th, 2016. And as we revisit this event, look for the qualities that make OUWB a distinctive place to learn medicine. And learn about the institution of a community designed to serve a community and about the value of expressing gratitude. In coming to this medical school, you embraced an innovative academic vision that calls for a fundamental change in the way that we deliver health care. Everybody that works here has just been phenomenal. It's like a little family, and to say that at the beginning of the four years is one thing, but to actually experience it for four years and actually feel like you've become a part of something bigger than yourself, and to have a family even away from home, it's just, it's amazing. It is their approach to teaching that extends beyond the laboratory and equips you to become not just skilled scientists, but also the well-versed, ethical, and compassionate class of graduates that you are. As mayor of the city of Pontiac, I can bear witness to the many ways that the city has benefited from your curriculum requirement that you gain professional development by experience outside of medicine. The profession of medicine is a profession of service to patients, but also to their communities. If you find yourself serving a community that does not share your core values, then remember that today, at your OUWB commencement, you publicly committed to respect all patients equally, and you further committed to advocating for a better world. Dr. Fatima Faz, Dr. Grenville Fernandez, Dr. Raymond Yishang Yao. We have a great community. We have a great family here. I know we all keep talking about the OUWB family, and that's really true. I'm extremely happy to, to finally achieve my dreams of being a physician, um, but it's important to remember why I'm here. It's just to thank everybody that's been around me and supporting me. I remember last year seeing all of the charter class cross the stage and hear doctor said before their name um, and getting chills and thinking, oh my gosh, that's me in a year, and now that is me. It's a surreal feeling. I mean, to, to walk out uh, and see my family and see all of our underclassmen and see my classmates and just people who have taught me. At OUWB, we ask you to answer two questions. What do I want to do and who do I want to be? When the days seem long and the load seems heavy, remember the bravery and the tenacity that each of you possesses. Despite the hard work, long hours, and sacrifices each of us has made to get here today, none of us got here alone. And you don't have to look very far to find the people who've helped us along the way. Be assured that you have the power to affect the world around you by the ripple effect of the lives you heal, the lives you change and inspire. Congratulations, OUWB, class of 2016. We made it. Can you see yourselves there? <laughs> and now you know how to get there. <laughs> <laughs>